you looking at, nerd? Huh? I thought I was looking at my mother's old douchebag, but that's in Ohio. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Sarcasm Aside podcast. Uh, it's a new podcast. My name's Tommy O'Neill. I'm Chris O'Neill, the yeah, brother. It's, a, it's okay. It's, a, it's an internet delay right there, so it'll get sharper and sharper. Don't you guys worry about that. This is, this is, a, new, this is a new podcast. Uh, me and Chris wanted to start doing, man. He, he texts me. He's like, bro, we like nerd stuff. We like, we like talking about stuff. I'm funny. You're funny. Let's do it. Let's get together. I'm like, yeah, bro. Why not, man? I already got 8 million other podcasts. Why not? Fuck it. Let's bring another one in the mix, dude. Nerd style, bro. That's verbatim what happened. We both talked about how hilarious we are. And now we're here. You know what I mean? Welcome. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Well, uh, I know that um, the interest, a a big, like, kind of, problem with the nerd world is that there's so much that encapsulates it especially in today's society so we didn't want to do one that was just like all about comics all about video games or all about technology we kind of wanted to put it all together into one thing and just kind of bounce around to different platforms and and try to have some fun with it yeah no doubt that's that's kind of what we're looking to do man i I, i'm I'm the jack of all trades with the nerd world and i've always wanted to do like any kind of podcast with it so it was really interesting to to kind of put them all together and say hey let's talk about this now nah, we'll talk about this this week yeah, let's talk about this because i feel like any kind of nerd is is kind of in the same boat right like they don't want to just talk about you know magic the gathering or they don't want to just talk about video games they want to talk about everything there's so much to it that why not just have something that gets together and has a good time with it now what do you think it is that is the component of that because there's artistic nerds there's nerds that just respect art and don't want they're not like creative but they just have this uh, uh, never ending desire to just consume all things nerddom and it's not an insult nerd is now like a, a sell you know girls they love being the hot nerd you know what i mean so now it's like right. it's like cool being a nerd so it's a completely different world from when we grew up right and that that's it's funny you said that. i was thinking the same thing when you started was that it, it's so new now the past what 10 years or so it's been okay to be into like dragon ball z as a kid right we watched dragon ball z how much were we like in the closet of like dragon ball z collecting pokemon cards and stuff like that you didn't go to school and we're like hey man check this out dude i just got my you know holographic charizard first edition it was never like that it was always like oh yeah that's cool man like whatever and then you just never talked about it or whatever Oh, and you always and, had your core group of friends that were exactly. like, you all did that. You'd have to like find the other guys that did it because yeah. you, you'd, you'd see them in class like drawing the Dragon Ball Z characters and you'd be like, oh, hell yeah, bro. This guy gets it. And then the yeah. other dudes, you see him like shuffling a deck of Pokemon cards and putting it away real quick. They're like, oh, don't look at me. They're like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. sitting next to you, bro. That's, that's really what it was. You had, to, you had to sift and find them. And now you're right, man. Like there's... Out here in Los Angeles, there are complete businesses dedicated to just like Pokemon meetups where, you know, once a week it's Pokemon, the next day it's magic, the next day it's a miniature game battle. It's nuts how it's not only, go ahead. That's always kind of been there, right? Like, so I know you were never really like a big Magic the Gathering fan. Yeah. And it was more so me and our older brother, Mike, were like the Magic the Magic the Gathering guys. And they've always had like Friday Night Magics, but again, it was never like a big thing. Uh, Wizards of the Coast puts that out and they, they put that out before the internet was around uh, as big of a deal as it was and they put that out and people would go you'd have these local meetups at like comic book stores and stuff like that and that's how you would be able to get away with doing those Friday night meetups and stuff like that Friday night magic nights and stuff like that where guys would get together and you'd be able to do it so that was really not a mainstream thing where you could find that information it was more so just like it so it was around but it was never like you had a whole media page dedicated to Magic the Gathering, Friday Night Magics and stuff. So it was so different then. I remember being a kid and it was like, who am I going to play Magic the Gathering with? I was always into Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot. And who am I going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! with? I didn't have anybody to play Yu-Gi-Oh! with. So I had to convince my buddies like, hey, go watch fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! And then play <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! with me. Because it's like, I was always into it. It's like, oh man, these are cool, you know? But, and then you get the core group of friends like you said and then you can just do that whole thing with them. So 
Yeah, card games were uh, not – once Pokemon ended for me, the age-wise, I, 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 that's when I stopped messing with the card games. Yeah. Um, but you guys are it, – it, it's interesting growing up with brothers, too, because you always – kind of fill out each other's nerd worlds you know because there's there's right. music nerd dumb there's comic book nerd dumb there's video game nerd dumb there's card game nerd dumb there's board game nerd there's so much that goes into it that you need more than one person to fill out all, all that stuff and then you the other person would kind of fill in the other guy and that's it, it's awesome how that ends up happening yeah so mike was always that big i don't know if you remember this but mike always had like Magic the Gathering cards and stuff. He was the reason, I don't think I've ever told him this, that he was the reason that I even got into the trading cards because I, I remember seeing the old artwork, like, dude, like first edition, second edition, like the old Magic the Gathering stuff. I remember seeing the artwork and going, this is cool. Like I remember seeing specifically the swamp cards, the land cards that were swamp. And I remember seeing them and going, this is fucking cool, man. Like, what is this? You know, Mike would explain it to me and then I never really played with him. I think I was too young at the time to really understand it. But I remember, I always vividly remember Swamplands. So I think Mike played the block or something like that. So yeah. It was well, kind of stuck with me on that. I, ju- I guess we figured out what the next episode should be about Magic the Gathering. I mean, you guys should definitely, we should, get, we should get Mike on here and, and chit chat about that. Because I, I mean, I know that's still a powerful thing. I just watched that Vice documentary about it not too long ago. Um, it's people are still doing it, man. It's not like it went away. It's just kind of evolving. You know, there's, you see these, uh, apps like lore. I mean, that's pretty much what magic the gathering is. That's that setup for it. It's just kind of a visual attack on it. So people definitely still appreciate the element of card games and the the strategy behind it. There's still, there's still magic, the gathering championships. There's magic, the gathering arena. Like there's a whole bunch, there's a whole world of it that it's tapped into. I mean, people, Wizards of the Coast is still doing stuff for that. You know, the company that owns them, they're still doing all those kind of side of the world of still making Magic the Gathering cards. They're still producing cards. They're still messing with the modern uh, meta and the standard meta and all the other metas that they have. They're still working on them. They still do commander stuff, which is fun to do. So they still have all that stuff. It's crazy. Uh, I, I, the only way that I can kind of rationalize it is just that people from our age group grew up and we just have money to spend and that's what we're spending money on. Yeah. You know, no doubt, man. Cause no you look at- that's, that's the same thing with the PC build. It, right. it, I was telling Riley that is like my wife, I was telling her that is that, um, you know, it's like, I never had the money as a kid to, to drop $1,500 on a PC to build what I wanted to build and what I wanted to make. And, and it's like, now that I've actually done it, it's like, as a 12 year old, I'd be punching myself in the throat. Like, dude, this is awesome. You know, you're jacked up for it. So World of Warcraft days when I was vividly into World of Warcraft, that's all I was doing. If I had this kind of PC, dude, game over, man. You would have never seen me even less than you already did see me. What is your, what is your motivation? Cause I, I know you're excited about building it. What was your motivation to build a PC? Cause I don't have any desire to do that. Why, why did you want to do that? So I built my first one in 2014, the year before my daughter was born. I remember that. So I built my first one and it was like a budget build, right? And I always was like, I want to tap into those graphics that PS3, Xbox 360, uh, even PS4 and Xbox One now don't get into. Because a lot of these companies, they build these games when they when they produce the software for them and all that stuff. They, they scale them for those... Um, consoles because the consoles are i mean you gotta think when it i don't remember the date when ps4 came out it must have been 2014 time frame right around this time frame that i built my first pc and it was like you know here you go actually i think it was earlier than that it's seven years so 2013 um and it's 2013 technology compared to 2020 technology playing a game on 2020 technology compared to 2013s and you might as well be playing on medium settings on the console and playing on ultra high on a PC that you built. It's so crazy. My fashion, Seven years doesn't seem like that long of a time even. No, but technology just seems to be pushing and pushing and pushing. You know, a lot of the guys that you look up, like I do a lot of research before I build and a lot of the guys are like, get something that's not quite high. Get that price point that you can really afford and enjoy because in three years, you're going to want to upgrade. You're going to want to be moving into that next spectrum. Yeah, you know, I I dropped four hundred dollars on my graphics card alone, 
on my on my uh, RTX 2060 Super, and that's already behind. Like you have the 2080s coming out, you got the new stuff at the uh, GeForce and Nvidia, and all of them are going to be pushing out. And why would I want to spend fifteen hundred dollars on a 2080 Ti when it's like okay, I, I'm not making money on this. I'm not doing anything with it where I'm, where I'm making abundance of money to be able to buy something like that. So why, why waste the money, you know? Yeah. Uh, my first PC, I think is, yeah, it's right there. It's right behind me. It's still on the floor. I haven't done anything. Rest in peace, little buddy. Yeah, dude. That's the original, bro. So. Jacked full of porn and uh, viruses, dude. top to bottom. No, the hard, no, no not anymore. Because the hard drive's out of it, all right? I moved the hard drive out of it. So and burned it, buried there. it in the backyard yeah, so no, no one will ever No, I wiped it. it and I'm using it in this PC. It's all wiped and used in this one. Now. Oh, are you really? Wow. Terabyte. Crazy. Yeah, it's where all my media It's all where all my media is going, like YouTube stuff that I'm going to start working on and all that stuff is going to get moved into there. That's cool, man. Yeah. What, are you, uh, what are you wanting to put on YouTube? So I'm wanting to move into like streaming, even if it's like a part-time thing, um, doing it. You know, I, I play video games enough and I hope that I'm a little bit entertaining to where I can do it. I don't know. I'm kind of just looking for something that I can move into a new direction and, and have some fun with stuff that I already enjoy. You know, my daughter's making way into elementary school. My wife works a full-time job. So it's like, I got time here. I'm by myself. Why not try and do something that I would enjoy? I love watching Twitch. You know, I watch, a lot of the big guys, Dr. Disrespect, I mean, Cutie Pie, like all those guys are, I, I watch all those guys a lot. And it's like, why not try it and see if I like it? So, you know, that's, that was a part of the reason why this new build happened, because that old one would not have been able to do a good stream. And, um, you know, my YouTube channel that I'm going to start working on, I don't really want to give away too much on it. I'm not saying somebody's going to find our podcast and randomly rip my idea, but I haven't really seen it yet and I really want to take that perspective for everybody and, and kind of guide people down that way of um, a new kind of idea through YouTube vlogging that hopefully I can get done and, and do a decent job at it. You know, I'm going to be editing everything. I, I've hired somebody to make a logo for me. Like I have no idea what I'm doing and hopefully I can do it semi decently well. So that's kind of the path that I'm going to be taking with YouTube. So hopefully I can get that up here in the next month. Um, you know, I got to start making some content and stuff like that and then get that up there. I'm waiting some, on some more equipment, like camera and stuff like that. So I got my lighting. I haven't set it up or anything, but it's going to be cool to kind of like document that through the podcast too, man. It's going to, we're going to yeah, have a, a, a unique, uh, you know, availability to do that. Cause it's not, you know, it's just kind of coinciding with, uh, us doing this podcast is just coinciding with all the stuff that you're wanting to do on your end because, like you said, your time is kind of freeing up on on your spot. Are you game wise? Are you wanting to? This is one of my biggest questions with games is that like when you go on Twitch, it's are these guys going after the games that everybody wants them to play, or are they just playing games that they are badass at and they're just like they're playing those games? I don't really so you know. Got like, yeah, you got like the two different kind of people. You got the entertaining person and then you got the skilled person. You know, the good way to put that is like Dr. Disrespect, super entertaining to watch. He's good. He's good at FPS shooters and stuff like that. I watch him on Warfare all, or Warzone all the time. I enjoy watching him. But he has like a whole different entertainment value to it that nobody else brings to the plate, in my opinion. He's, he's like his own production company. I mean, he's got people that I'm sure works for him and helps him out with that. But when he, he brings like a, almost a show quality to it. And then you got guys that are like, who, who's a good example? Um, Froggen from League of Legends, who's a, a known LEC competitor. So a European guy who plays in league championships over there. Or actually, I think Froggen played for NA now. I don't remember. I had to look it up. I, I, I watch LCS here and there, but I don't, I don't keep up with it too much. Uh, but you got those guys that are that are you know good. Uh, Shroud Summit Summit One G is a good example too for an FPS shooter. He played competitive uh, CS:GO and now he streams exclusively FPSs. So you know you have the two different types of guys. You got skill and then you got entertainment. In, in my opinion, um, and if you can kind of hybrid the two, you're you're usually not like super high up there. But if you have a good entertainment value, you're fun to watch. Um, I think you can set skill aside because then you can even be comical with it. You can kind of enjoy it like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm dumb. Like, I shouldn't have made that play. Like, that was retarded. And then watch the guy rage out about it, you know. That's right. an entertaining value. Uh, Tyler won. 
uh, L, uh, League of Legends. Well, I'm just referencing a lot of League of Legends streamers, but Tyler One does that. You know, he's that raging guy. He's toxic, and that's what his play is. And the guy averages between twenty to forty thousand people in an average Tuesday stream for him. So it's it. Nobody's really going to Tyler One stream for a complete skill. He's good. I mean, he's been playing for a while, but you're going there for entertainment more than anything. So the, I think it's the two Twitch qualities that you find. When you're picking your games, what are you going to uh, go after? Do you think you're going to try to find games that you're uh, at least decent at? Uh, and that pe- or are you going to go for the games that, like, it doesn't matter if you're good at them. You just know what people are watching, and you're going to kind of go, f- go for those games. Yeah, and I, I don't know yet because I haven't even – I've never even streamed yet. So I've just been doing a lot of research and, like, studying of, like, what I want to do exactly – and a lot of the people, you'll see a lot of things that say, stick to one game, stick to one game, game that you're good at and people will enjoy watching you play, right? So that's like a big thing that people say. And then you'll see other people that say, just um, if you're going to do multiple games, be entertaining to watch. Um, enjoy that. Oh, God, I had a burp. But, um, hey, dude, it was a fart. Don't lie, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> but, it, you know, you... you you can either get there for entertainment value and do multiple games, or you can do one specific game. I kind of don't like that. I like to tune into somebody that I, I enjoy watching. So like Dr. Dis- Disrespect, I can use him as another example as FPS shooter guy. He plays multiple battle Royale games and he's very good at them, but he's also super entertaining. So no matter what Dr. Disrespect puts on, like I even have him on notifications on my phone to watch when I'm bored. It's like, Oh, he's on. I'm going to watch him. He could be playing PUBG, which is total shit to me, and I hate watching that game. Or he could be watching Warzone, and I love watching it. I just want to watch him. And there's other guys that, like, okay, I'm going to tune in for League, but I'm never really watching Twitch to get better. I'm watching Twitch to be entertained. It's it's like my Netflix. You know, I enjoy – I'll lay in bed with my iPad, and I'll watch Twitch streamers. Or I'll watch YouTube videos of Twitch highlights. So it's – I like it as a show, so I hope that I can move into that spectrum of where it's entertaining to just watch. So yes, I'll be playing things that I'm like good at. You know, I think I'm decent decent enough at Warzone where I could stream that. But it's like I want to play stuff that I enjoy because if I'm not enjoying it, how am I expecting people, twenty people to a thousand people, to even enjoy watching me if I'm not enjoying what I'm playing? So if I want to play League of Legends that night, hey, I'm gonna play League of Legends that night. If I want to play COD Warzone, I'm gonna play COD Warzone. If I want to chill out and just get on just chatting on Twitch and just chat or just play like Legends of Runeterra or Hearthstone, then I'm going to do that. I want to do what I enjoy because then I know that I can exude that, hey, I'm enjoying this. I hope you're enjoying this with me type of thing. So hopefully that'll be the move. If not, if I need purely numbers and I make some money, then I'm going to just follow what everybody else says and make this a full-time job. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, bro. And just make uh, that mad though. Just pay companies to follow you online and push your views up to the top, <laughs> man, and get that money. There you go. That's yeah. good, man. I'm excited for you. I, I, I think it's it's gonna be fun watching it all kind of come together. Um, and I know you, you're gonna go full force and it's not it you don't you don't you're not gonna do stuff like half heartedly in terms of like you're not gonna start until you're ready to start. And when yeah. that when that happens, you're going to be prepared and ready to go, and it's going to be looking good. So um, I'm excited for you, bro. It's going to be tight. Yeah, there's a lot of learning to it, man. I I was building my PC, I recorded it, and it's like I'm going to have so minimal footage after that because I'm like either leaning into the camera and I'm doing this. I'm not taking more than one shot. I'm just I just kind of like threw it up there, threw some lighting up, and I was like, yeah, this would be good. And it's like, nah, man, you have maybe like three minutes worth of video. It's like, okay, cool. You know, I'll be able to mash it up somewhere and just kind of be able to show it. But it is what it is. There's plenty of YouTube content out there for building PCs. And I I think the exercise, and this is why I was encouraging you to film it. I wasn't necessarily encouraging you to um, post it, but start filming stuff that you're doing for sure. That way you get an understanding of like what you just said like angles yeah. how you should be filming it like maybe getting it in different ways different perspective because um yeah it's gonna help you and i think people would be interested i'm interested in it you know in kind of watching a pc build and gradually get to um you know where your office is even like doing before and after pictures and stuff like that i i think it would be cool and add a, a different level to your uh your twitch channel and your youtube channel to 
bring people in from ground zero all the way up. So, and you're, sure. you're, you're, at, you're at ground zero right now. And it's, uh, yeah, man. It, it's cool, dude. Um, I, are you going to uh, do call of duty? Are you going to put that on Twitch? Yeah, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to be playing with you guys too. So people can just realize how bad you and Mike are at the game. Oh, that's, time. that's nice. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I, I, I don't care about that. I'm, I'm more excited to see cause how ruthless we are. There's, we, there's people that don't play with us as much as they would play with us. I feel like if we were a little bit nicer, but it, the ruthlessness that goes on <laughs> amongst those chats, it's just like brutal, man. It's brutal. Yeah, no, no. The, the, uh, it's fun though. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a part of it, right? That's what I grew up in. Uh, and you grew up in, we both grew up in that era of Xbox where there was no repercussions. Like nowadays, people can definitely track your IP and probably find out where you live and like threaten you and stuff. I'm sure that definitely happens. But like <laughs> back then, that didn't happen. Like Xbox 360 playing on there or whatever, any of those games online, you could get on there and just cuss at people, call them whatever you wanted, and there was zero repercussions. You know what I mean? So yeah. to be able to just start doing that again every once in a while, just having a good time with you guys, like cracking up over it, being half-hearted with it, um, you know, it's just fun. It is fun, and uh, I don't. I, I definitely. Th- I'm always entertained by it. So I think you can get you know twenty to a thousand people to watch you, if that's uh, your goal. Yeah, dude, five people consecutively would make me happy. I'm not gonna. I don't want to shoot for high hopes right now. I want to work for what I'm working on. And if I can entertain five people, man, I would be happy. If if that turns into ten, and then that turns into twenty, then that's cool too. I think as long as you keep your head on your shoulders in that way, you'll do fine. Cause that's, that's, so. that's the kind of way to have that perspective. You don't want to go into it and be like, yo man, we're going to start off with like 8,000. Then if it goes down, you know, I'm going to kill myself. Okay, bro. Ah! Like, nah, man, I'm you done. just have, ha- have fun with it. And as long as you're having yeah. fun, I, it's like you said, you know, if you're having fun, people are going to want to be a part of that fun and come in with you and, and yeah. just have some fun. And I'm, not, bro. and I'm not doing it for anybody, but me, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And it's kind of like, let's just do it. See what happens. And if people enjoy watching it, cool. If they don't, eh, whatever. I still have a sweet ass PC that I can play mad video games on. So that's good enough for me too. Fast as hell. Scary rates. It's, it's fun, man. That's cool, man. I know um, you guys watch me sometimes when you die and it's like I'm having a seizure playing Call of Duty. So it's pretty fun. A, a little bit. My head hurts sometimes, but that's also, <laughs> you know, I'm like five whiskeys deep, you know, I've been smoking, oh, fair enough. Yeah, smoking yeah. weed for the last eight hours and I'm just like, what's happening? And you're just like, like a jackrabbit. <laughs> it's, it's mayhem. I? Sure, yeah. mayhem, dude. I'm more of a, a tactile uh, killer. Um, we did chit chatting for a little while. Uh, we did have a topic that we wanted to talk about, but. I don't know. Do you just want to keep kind of rolling here and, and, and chit chatting about um, what the future of the podcast might be and that kind of stuff? Or do you, I, I don't know if we're going to have time to jump into everything here. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if we can, if we can get our topic done that we wanted to talk about, I definitely have a, a purpose for the, for the podcast. I think that's a good idea, right? Bro. I love it. See, this is what we're doing. You know, we, we talk about our problems and we solve them right <laughs> away. So exactly. Me and you are, are, are like, like we were talking about earlier, we've, we fill each other out in the nerd world. The stuff that you kind of dabble in more, um, I dabble in less. And the stuff that I dabble in more, you dabble in less, but also you're, you're still tight-knitted with it. I know that comic books were around us growing up and yeah. more so they're around us today. Um, and we've watched comics kind of transcend from tv shows that's really what got us i mean I'm, i don't want to speak for you but what they got how all the tv shows that were on fox and the wb all the comic book heroes that were on tv that's what really got me into that world yeah. and, and invested and then toby mcguire of course and sam raimi making spider-man that leading to iron man yeah i know two different productions but like i i feel like you don't get iron man if you didn't get toby mcguire spider-man was the beginning of that so like a lot of this world that we are in right now is generated and i don't want to it it is a nerdy world that we're living in but it's heavily laced in this comic book culture and there's no other way to put it i think culture is kind of the best word to describe it um and it's funny because i mean i don't know how you want to put a comic book comic books just it is a book it's a story it's just got a lot of pictures in it 
with little bubbles instead of narration and, you know, proper yes. wording and all that shit. So I don't know. Books have been around for a long time, but comic books, I don't know when we're going to say the American comic books, fifties and between the thirties and fifties is really like where we get the formation of where we start to see comic books really become what they are today. Um, and that blows my mind. That's a super young thing to see kind of like paint over our society, this gaze of uh, uh, positivity, man. It's, it's, it's amazing what superheroes from comics are, were able to do. Somebody's imagination, how it could inspire people of all ages. It doesn't matter how old you are. It, make, it turns you into a child and it makes you into this like heart, full-hearted hero in this moment you relate yeah. or villain sometimes you know like in movies i know i'm jumping around but i'm gonna i'm gonna get to a point where i'm gonna start and move forward i'm going all over the place <laughs> follow me guys follow me you're good but, but villains like magneto how they were able to bring to life magneto's story through film and just like holy shit i could really relate to magneto you know he's a jew who was being killed by hitler his family was being killed it's like no shit this guy hated humans man hey <laughs> how the fuck couldn't you man like th to do that to make relatable characters off, uh, off of animated things on a panel i mean it's just it's it's amazing what comic books have been able to do in the very short amount of time that they've been in existence especially in our culture and it blows me away okay so let's start here. Right. Um, I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a history. Anytime you want to chime in, jump in, cut me off. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ramble if you don't stop me. There you go. So, um, like I said, the 30s and 50s is really what happened there is war was going on. And what people were buying was basically war comic books and horror story comic books. So you get like the Swamp Thing and that kind of stuff from DC Comics. Um, and... Superman was around, obviously. He was like a radio show and stuff like that. And Shazam, actually, Captain Marvel was around, the original Shazam. Um, but basically, superheroes weren't an abundance. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was rare that they would have more than a, a handful of superheroes per company because yeah. they had strangleholds on kind of superpowers. And there's, uh, I don't want to... Yeah, we could do it just because it fits the time frame. But there's an infamous story about, I don't know if you're aware of this, Chris, but um, Captain Marvel, the company that owned Captain Marvel, that's the original name of Shazam. You knew that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, that character kind of embodied a lot of S Superman's powers. Um, but weirdly enough, Captain Marvel flew first. So Superman stole that. The creators of Superman stole that from Captain Marvel um, and some other tiny little stuff. So they kind of stole from each other there for a while. Yeah. Okay. Um, and basically Superman's people sued Captain Marvel's people and they had to dismantle everything. And DC came in and bought all the shit from uh, Captain Marvel's company. And that's when the name switch happened. Uh, Atlas became Marvel eventually. So from this yeah. lawsuit, Atlas bought the name Marvel. So the decimation of Captain Marvel is really the beginning of what we know about our, this is, this is the beginning of the 60s. And when the 60s happened, that's when Marvel really takes off. Uh, this is the important time of, of superheroes. You have Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, John Ramada, all working together at Marvel. Yeah. And the this Godfathers, is essentially right. And this is yeah. the, the era of comic books that we really get to know all the superheroes that are iconic today. You know, you get Spider-Man, yeah. Fantastic Four, Incredible Hulk, um, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, uh, Ant-Man, Ultron. I mean, everybody, Black Widow, uh, they're really pushing Thor. You also you get all these uh, Black Panther, Falcon. For the first time ever, you get black superheroes. You get fe yeah. the pro prominent female superheroes that isn't just Wonder Woman. You get all these uh, gigantic... I mean, did it have something to do with the cultural movement at the time? 
possibly because, I mean, I, it, how could it not have something to do with Vietnam and the drugs and everything that was kind of popping at that time? It was cool to be anti-establishment. Captain sure. America, who was developed in the 30s, he went from being this, you know, he, he was in comics that were literally, he was beating up Hitler. He would beat the shit out of Hitler in comic books, which are badass comics. Yeah. I, I totally recommend you look them up. There's- Dude, you, you can look them up online as like, so I have a couple of those tin comic book covers. They have those covers of Captain America beating the shit out of Hitler and a bunch of Nazis, like the original ones, man. Like the, the classic ones where he's fighting Adolf and all them. Yeah, they're still prominent, dude. You can still find them around. And the thing so. is, is like during that time, the, a lot of those guys were Jewish. A lot of those comic book writers were Jewish. So they were doing it like it because there was a genuine concern like, hey, the Nazis could win this war. This is while yeah. the war is going on. It wasn't like like now you could say fuck Hitler. Obviously, everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> of course, fuck <laughs> okay, Hitler. Yeah, that guy he, sucks. He sucks, right? But back then it was there was like Nazis in America. There was people that supported the German party from America. So it was a, it was real for them to be doing that. So it went from um, that Captain America to the '60s Captain America, where he was f- anti-government, and we get this surgence of Captain America, which is like this. He, what's going on in society? What the American people feel? That's what Captain America f- feels, and we fe- that's where we get this surgence of also, which the first time in the '60s, what we ever see, the Avengers, X Men. Yeah. These are gigantic characters because the groups. They, it, giant groups, the Fantastic yeah. Four, the Avengers and X-Men teams of superheroes yeah. that are international. And the X-Men obviously being a metaphor for racism at the time, the Avengers, it, it, it's such a powerful uh, moment in comic book history. And I'm not saying that there wasn't new comic book comics written because obviously the 70s followed with star lord and you get this uh rocket raccoon all all the stuff you get all all, guardians of the galaxy starts to fill out thanos comes in the 70s you get all these great stuff in the next decade but it's you see this continuation of inspiration where like it really came from the 60s man and stan lee jack kirby those guys fucking made it all dude it's it's pretty wild to see it yeah and it's funny that you you can see that pan out like over that length of time right so where they did the introductions for all those ones and then they started making the avengers and then the x-men and fantastic four but even with like marvel cinematic universe which you know can be a whole nother podcast that we could talk about but if you look at that and how that panned out, so that started about 2010, right? When Iron Man 1 came out, I think it was about 2010. And they started that Marvel comic uh, universe, you know, that initiative, essentially, Avengers initiative, but they were eventually working towards. You see the same thing back then when they, when they build all those comics together and push them together. You know, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby doing the same thing where they're moving towards that. And you, it's a longer enveloping sequence but it's still the same thing. I remember going to the hype train of Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that was the same thing of the 70s and the 60s. Is you see that build up, build up, build up, and then it's like, oh shit, now stuff's starting to pop off. That's when you get the the apocalypse. Or I'm sorry, that's DC. You start getting the Thanos, and you start getting um, you know the big fights with with Doctor Strange and all the other villains out there. You start getting the same thing as you see with the MCU and all that stuff that we have now. So we actually, in my opinion, we had our same kind of um same kind of time frame as everybody did back then you know where we moved into cinematic side which was incredible to see but everybody got to experience that too back then so i totally cool to think about it i totally agree with you and to yeah. get to have the lug like it's what you just said is is perfect it's like to have there's no way we could appreciate it until we're like way past it to have how many yeah. Uh, incredible movies back to back to back to back perfectly casted actors back to back to back perfect storylines that bleed into each other back to back to back it's unbelievable how they were able to do it again in a different medium they were able to and you know movies like the civil war which is one of my favorite marvel movies that book was not written that long ago that, that's a fairly new comic book. That's not like they grabbed the old comic from the 60s and were like, ah, let's just redo this. 
these guys are genuinely rewriting some storylines that are brand new, hard to tackle shit. And it's, it's, there's no way we could appreciate how amazing of a time era that we're living in. Um, just like, I feel like we, I, I didn't appreciate how dope cartoons were in the nineties, uh, superhero wise until now, yeah. until now. I mean, it's incredible. You look back at how many, yes, there was the incredible Hulk, um, TV show. That's okay. Uh, but other than that, dog shit TV shows up until the nineties where you get DC coming out with the best Batman. This is what made me like Batman and Superman. That This is the origin of it. Those two iconic uh, TV w- shows, the cartoon shows. Yeah. The WB ones. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Incredible. Saturday night or Saturday morning, uh, cartoons. Yeah. Those two voices, those are the voices I hear forever. When I'm reading Batman yeah, when you're and reading Super- the comics, yeah. That's it. Those are the, those are the guys. You. And even mm-hmm. uh for video games. The Arkham Asylum series, uh the Arkham se- series, I don't I don't know what you call it. Those go- those co- it's not the same game if you don't get the voice from that TV show. If you don't yeah. if you don't get it it doesn't make any sense. So they get Mark Hamill to do Joker. You know, they have, you have to, to, you have to you get have those to voices. Yeah. yeah. And same with Superman. And they pull them every once in a while to get, uh, to do movies. But when they have some rando voice in there, it's kind of, it, it turns your stomach and you don't realize how lucky you are because in the nineties, dude, Batman, who was the same voice all the time. So he did them all. Like he did every cartoon that there was. It's like, how lucky were we to be a kid at that time? And then yeah. the movies on top of it, it just blows, it blows my mind uh, that, yeah, you don't, I don't know. I appreciate Marvel for all that it is. And I try to stay on top of my appreciation for them because like you just said with the movies, it's like to see the end game and then look back at it all. You're like, holy shit, that was a mountain we just climbed. How the, how the fuck did we get up here, man? This is nuts. For sure. And I mean, the same thing happens with the comics, you know, they're climbing a mountain. They're building those Avengers initiative and all like the actual, you know, uh, tunneled real storyline that they put together. It's the same thing. All those shows and all those movies, they all started from the platform of, some guys in the 70s and the 60s that put these comics together and they ship them out and everybody's like, what's a superhero? Well, this is what a superhero is. Here you go. Here's Superman who's got, you know, flight, laser beam eyes, you know, super strength. And he's got all this. He's, he's actually an alien. But then it's like, oh, well, superheroes can also be Batman. Superheroes can also be Spider-Man. He's some kid who gets bit by a spider. And now here he is, you know, and... It, it, you got the science, you got the geeks, you got, you got everything included in there. It's like the cool thing about the comics was always anyone can be a superhero. And I think that's the biggest appeal to them. It, when you boil it down to the smallest molecule of it, right? The, the smallest idea of it is any one of us can be an Iron Man. If we had the wealth to build the suit and the wits and the smarts, Anybody can be Tony Stark, right? Elon Musk. Anybody can compare Elon Musk to Tony Stark. It's kind of the same outline, right? Batman's the same way. Superman, okay, that's a little far-fetched, you know, alien. But hey, you know, whatever. But he, Dr. Octavius, that's a good example too. You know, it's a, he's a scientist. Anybody can be that person. You could be that high school kid who's pretty smart in school, and then you get bit by a spider on a field trip. And now, hey, guess what? You're, you're a spider. And it, it, that's what it always boils down to for me. And I think for most people, it, and without even realizing it, is comics make you feel like you can be that person. Like you are Captain America because you hate Hitler or you believe in the country and whatever, anything like that where you're, you're the symbol of the country, you feel that way. It, that's what it's coming down to. And without those platform of those paper booklets that were written so long ago almost like the comic book bibles without those do we really have the mcu as good as it is if somebody re- creates something like that type of head, do we really have a good dc um a semi-decent dc universe <laughs> a good animated series that came out in the 90s and do we even have any of that you know do we even have stuff that branches off from superheroes you know like um um 
Blade or Buffy. You know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I took it off of your wall. But, you know, any kind of that stuff where it's like something slowly branched off of it. You know, the mystical realms and, and the wizards and the Harry Potters and stuff like that. Is it the same without comic book inspiration? I'm not saying that J.K. Rowling got her inspiration from Stan Lee. What I am saying is that everybody knows who Iron Man, who Spider-Man, who Superman, who Batman, who Wonder Woman, who all these people are. You, you have an inkling. If I say Wonder Woman, you have an image in your head. If I say Batman, you have a really good image in your head. If I say Iron Man, you know who I'm talking about. So are these things, were these mystical ideas and these heroes and, and all this other stuff, does that branch from those platforms that were built forever ago by these handful of people? And I think the answer is definitely yes. Like you don't have the same world that we have now without that stuff. So I think that's always something that a lot of people are so passionate for comic books for. It's like they built a lot. I'm not saying they built everything, but they definitely built an idea. And when you were talking about earlier how they were stealing ideas from each other, yeah, that they were building that brand. They were building that, that idea. And if it wasn't for that, then what do we have now? I definitely don't think we have the same stuff now. I totally agree with you. Uh, um, all, all of what you, a lot of what you said was really interesting. I just didn't want to interrupt you. You're, uh, you're on a rampage, so I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> to spec all of it. But um, a, a lot of what you said was dead, dead, dead on point. And I think it's, it's human for us to desire these bigger-than-life characters yeah. and rest so much on them. And, you know, we're, as we kind of, as a society, get farther and farther away from religion – um, these guys kind of provide a safe platform for these bigger than life events that we can kind of somehow get behind. And like you said, the humanization of these characters, it, you can connect so well with them. And from Peter Parker being a teenager, I mean, when I was a teenager, granted, Tobey Maguire was, you know, 35 goddamn years old when he was doing the film. Uh, <laughs> He's the Pleasantville guy. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I I related to that character Spider Man so much, and it had nothing to do with his superpowers. It was Peter Parker. You you could relate to yeah. that character just the insecurity of who he uh, is. Except for Spider Man Three, that Spider Man Three Peter Parker doesn't count. Nobody wanted to. Definitely. Nobody can relate to that. Nobody. <laughs> <not a self>. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's weird. Like you said, there is a lot of controversy that's laced in comic books, but it almost doesn't matter at a certain point because you get to where we are today. Uh, and it, so many people are concerned with the credit, and I do think that's important. The Batman history, the movie about the history of Batman, Batman and Bill. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's a, uh, seen it. it's a documentary about Bill Finger, uh, who's the actual inventor of Batman? And this guy named Bob Kane. You're he, you're gonna see his name on like everything Batman. He makes sure of it. Uh, it's like uh, it's crazy how this documentary kind of analyzes this dude. But basically, Bill Finger worked for Bob Kane, and because of how that worked, he was able to copyright his ass right out of it. And he was just standing over. Bob was standing over Bill. And just being like, oh, shit, dude, that looks pretty good, man. I'm like, it's Batman, thanks, man, I appreciate it. And just like took off, and that, wow. like, that was okay. it. Yeah. And Bill Finger, during the time that he was working with Bob on Batman, he came up with the Joker. He came up with like all of his iconic villains. I mean, I don't want to get into them all, but like all, all of them. He brought, Finger is the dude, and it, it's funny how many stories there are in dc like that now there's obviously the same in marvel a lot of people kind of go back and forth on who really came up with these characters jack kirby or was it stan lee steve dicko which one of the three of these guys not to take anything from john but at the beginning beginning like the spider-man thing a lot of people say it's more steve and stan's kind of story about how he came up with these like yeah i was just sitting in my office i saw the mosquito and i was like hey spider-man and then that's that's it it's like okay <laughs> i guess that's bingo bingo that could be true i guess i don't know i don't know maybe and jack kirby's dead obviously so his son kind of has a different recollection of stuff and 
Stanley's beloved, so no one wants to shit on him, but there is yeah. stuff against – I've seen documentaries that are just, like, trashing Stanley, and it's it sucks. And you're going to find those all, all over. Everyone's going to shit on everybody. But um, for the most part, I – I think it's ultimately good no matter what because these characters are so important to today's society. They're good for kids. They're good for adults. You know, we all can be inspired by them. Um, and it's cool. It's really cool to see how they've tested. They've lasted the test of time. And I think they're going to continue to last the test of time, um, especially with Disney. Once they're purchased by Netflix, everything's going to be taken care of. You mean purchased by Apple? That was a big rumor for a while. Oh, was it? I yeah, thought Amazon. Yeah. I thought Jeff Bezos was just going to buy them all and say, you know what? Everything's canceled. No more TV. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, and I think I think the reason that they stand the test of time is what I was saying is that you know you have everyone that can relate to a superhero, and you have the mortality of a superhero. So no matter what, there's always room for a superhero, and that's kind of what it lays down to. So you can. 15 years from now, they can end up redoing all the Avengers movies and they're still going to be pretty good because you can, you have the relatability to that person. You know, everyone can relate to Iron Man. I can relate to him even more now that I have a daughter of my own and the last movie. Spoiler alert, I'm not going to give it away, but you know, no, it's like the last movie. It's like, wow, I can relate to that a lot. You know, I have a little girl and I have a wife and it's like, wow, that's me. If I was way smarter than I am and I had a, ton more money than I do but you can still put yourself into those shoes and that's was happening even then in the comics so without that relatability and that that being able to to see yourself as a superhero the mortality of a superhero I don't think you really have superheroes or right. have them take off like they did and I mean we're really uh just because you know this is not going to be a five-hour podcast um and we'll get into stuff in the future but it's not just marvel it's not just dc you know you have that show happy which is one of my favorite comic book renditions of a tv show ever 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 it's one of the fucking illest shows ever um you have stuff like uh, The Watchmen. I know some people hate it, but the extended version is fantastic. Sin City. Anything Frank Miller's ever touched. There's so much shit that is... Yeah. The, it, 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 it's like you open up a comic book, dude, it is made for a movie script. You're looking at it, you're like, well, this, this guy already did yeah. all the hard work. I'm just going to fucking put it on the screen. No problem. Let's do this. It's, no doubt. No it, doubt. It, it's... I don't know. It's cool, man. Um, before we uh we take off here, uh, I know that in the future we're gonna be talking about um more of this nerdy stuff. We'll we'll spread it out. Um, I let let's get together next week. We'll we'll do it up. Yeah. Um, I don't sure. know. We'll we'll figure out what topic we want to kind of riff on. I we'll get more and more specific as the uh, show kind of progresses. So don't worry, guys. If you're like, hey man, this isn't really that's not dirty enough for me. We're just kind of appreciating. You know, okay, just yeah, calm take down. It, take us with a grain of salt. We're not going to claim that we're like the end all be all of information of everything nerdy, okay? Let's get that out of the way first. I'm retarded. My <laughs> brother is less retarded than I am. Possibly. And here we are just trying to make a podcast and enjoy it because we have a lot of things that we like to talk about and we like to talk to each other. So we're yeah. not going to be the end all be all of a knowledge base, but we're going to do our best to definitely research it and give you the best information that we can. And to just enjoy listening. And if you got some stuff you want to talk about, hey, whatever, talk about it. And we could also bring you guys on. If you guys have some interesting stuff that you want to talk about with us that's nerdy as shit, dude. One of, a, one of the best parts about the nerd world is learning more stuff that you had no idea existed in the nerd world and just get your total mind blown by a different universe. Like that, finding out the world of Magic the Gathering. You, if you don't know anything about that and you step into it, you're like, what the fuck? They make you feel like the <laughs> idiot. You're the idiot in that world, you know? Like you walk in, they look at you funny and like you're not wearing all black. What the fuck's the matter with you, you tool bag? It's it's it, it, it's a it's an interesting little uh, world to to live in. So if you guys got something to talk about, come on the show. We'll chit chat with you guys. So all right, man. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks a lot for listening. Peace. Take it easy. <laughs>